Okay, in this video and in several more to come, I would like to ask then sort of a big question or the big question. And I wonder what it's going to be. Well, take a look. The big question is sort of this. We have the solar system here, which we've discussed many, many aspects about. And the question is like, where did all this come from? This is the big question. Where did all these planets come from? Where did the sun, this glowing hot ball come from in the middle there? Where did all these neat circles come from? The orbits, of course the circles aren't there, they're just the paths of the orbits. Where did all this order come from with the counterclockwise orbit, the counterclockwise spins? And as we know, what about Venus sort of upside down? What about Uranus spinning over on its side? Where, where did all this come from? Now, that's sort of our big question. It comes from a theory that astronomers have put forth called the nebular hypothesis. So, of course, it's a hypothesis because it can never be proven, right? Uh, but what we know about this formation here what we know about the formation is that roughly the time scale is 4.5 billion years ago. So this sort of, we're talking about something that happened that long ago. We know 4.5 billion by dating rocks and things and whenever we find the oldest rocks on the earth or the oldest rocks on the moon or um, bits of meteorites that are known to come from the solar system, they sort of always seem to have this oldest age about them. So we know that the solar system is about that old. So we're talking about a hypothesis of formation that happened sort of, you know, this long ago. And it will always be 4.5 billion years old because even in 100 years, you know, say maybe when um, you, your kids are adults or whatever, you're, then, then it'll be another generation. But it'll still be 4.5 billion years ago, and even 100,000 years from now when the Big Dipper starts to change its shape or whatever, as we discussed. It'll still be 4.5 billion years ago because it was a very long time ago. So that's the hypothesis. And of course, what nebula refers to here is uh, dust. Whenever you ever hear the word nebula or nebular in astronomy, it always refers to dust. And so what we're talking about with, with the dust here is this is sort of, of course, a view here of the, the Milky Way. This is sort of looking to the center of our galaxy. And we I think we, this came up at least once in a previous video that on even a... Um, sort of a nice dark night even around, say, Cal Poly where in San Luis Obispo where you go to school. Um, you can kind of see this sometimes here. Uh, and in extreme conditions, if you get out to a really dark site, maybe you're camping somewhere, maybe this is what you would see here. And the nebula or the dust that we're talking about here is all of this stuff in here. So it isn't like these black things right here are sort of just for some reason there's no stars or that isn't what's happening. There's just a lot of dust here that's blocking the star's lights that are behind it. So there are stars in this region of our galaxy and the light is coming our way, but it gets blocked by dust. And you can sort of see that in here as well. And in fact, what this is called here is the part of our um, galaxy, it's called the Great Rift, because you can just sort of see why here. It's just sort of a rift of darkness, uh, rift of dust. And so my point of telling you that is there's just a lot of dust out there in outer space. And we'll confine our discussion here, I guess, to our galaxy because that's what our solar system is formed in. So there's a lot of dust in our galaxy for sure. What is it? Just stuff that uh, never formed in anything. It has carbon in it. And it's just, just little bits of dust that never formed anything. But the point is that there's a lot of it out there. Okay. But in terms of describing some things about the solar system, how it formed in the nebular hypothesis is whatever we come up with here has to uh, sort of has to explain has to sort of explain what we see. In other words, it's just a hypothesis, but there's no way we're going to give it any credit if it doesn't explain some of the really obvious things that we see around us in our solar system, right? Like, for example, the first thing that the nebular hypothesis has to explain is number one, this big hot star that's in the center of our solar system. Where did that come from? How did it get ignited? How did the fusion reaction and the proton-proton chain start to get going like that? And how, where did the sun come from? Then, of course, you see this massive distinction in our solar system here. You see that the inner planets here are very small and rocky. 
very small and rocky. In other words, in other words, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, my very energetic mother, are all made out of rocks, and they're very small in comparison to the so-called planets out here, which are just known as the gas giants. So they're very different. So in other words, it's just like this line here that pretty much describes in a very, excuse me, divides in a very obvious way some small rocky planets from some huge gas giants, which exist a little further out. So whatever nebula hypothesis we come up with has to describe all these things. We wouldn't want a theory that doesn't tell us where the sun came from, why planets close by are really rocky, why they get gas, gassy and more big or larger as you get away from sort of this, this line here that I've drawn. So more in the next video.